to our next segment of this, how to prepare your home to make more money and sell faster on the market. This is going to be fun. Just because these <laughs> notes are from my parents' business from back in the early 90s. And we're sort of going to make fun of them a little bit. But I think they're good. I mean, they're good notes regardless. So we're going to have solid. fun. Solid notes. Okay. Yep. Yep. John, lead us here. What are we going to talk so about first? So let's talk about repairs. Like okay. you're getting your home ready to sell. What If you've got some problems in the house, what should you do? I mean, repair it. Let's talk about these repairs. It's going to be cheaper for you to do it now. Yeah. Fix it. Get it so right. So let's read the first one. Yep. Rule of thumb, if something needs repair, fix it. Yep. And then, uh, all right, of course, you want to look at all the interior walls. Are they, right. are they scuffed up? Had the kids, you know, colored on them? And I love a magic eraser. I think that, <laughs> that solves lots of problems. In fact, I've even used white toothpaste as putty to fit, yes. <laughs> to repair the holes once you pull down. A, 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 if you're re, you know, taking down your personal items, of course, and putting up, you know, some, some art to, to cover up some wall paste, wallpaper. Toothpaste is a really good tip. Tip number one. <laughs> right Next. on. So, and the, so the, I mean, just simple repairs, get them done, make them ready. And, but if you have large repairs, what if the roof needs fixing? Again, we, we suggest you fix this now. One is if you're on the market and you're trying to negotiate this repair, odds are you're not going to have the time to find the best vendor, the one that you trust. Mm -hmm. And it's really going to be the guy that you can just make it there, the guy or gal that can make it there to give you a number fast for you to negotiate. Yeah. So make these repairs now. One of the rules is like treat the buyer as you would treat yourself, you know, <laughs> yes. set the expectations high. Just to, like if you walked into the house, you don't want to you don't want to see, you know, a hole in the wall or, you know, thing. The carpet's got, you know, holes in them or dirty. Take the time, spend the money, get it ready. People, st people still want ready, you know, homes. Move in ready. You know, my, my re I think that people really want to move directly into their home now as opposed to maybe prior to COVID. Actually, I think it was probably maybe a decade before COVID when people were buying homes in a more, I don't know, uh, rough and tumbled fashion. People are, in, this is the largest exchange of wealth happening. It's been happening for the past 10 years. And I feel like this generation of buyers um, they expect it to be finished because they've got the money to buy it how they want it. And, and also, too, at the end of the day, to be a competitive seller, to attract the most people that you can, you want to make it attractive to the, most, to the broadest market, which is fix it. Make it, make it appealing to the, most to, to the most people possible. Yep. Okay, next. Next up is let's talk about cleaning the house, getting it ready. I mean, throughout the drawers. I went to look at the show a house two weeks ago, and you open up the drawers, and it's filthy. You know, and then they're like, "What? What is <laughs> so this?" Did all their drawers even... were junk drawers. Junk drawers. <laughs> you know, yeah. they, they'd moved out but left everything filthy. I have one junk drawer in my house. I, me well, too. It's, I mean, cleaning my office. It's embarrassing. Drawers. I hope nobody ever looks at it. Uh, I guess if you talk to my husband, he might give you a different number. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so cleaning the house, cleaning the windows, inside and out, um, right. making sure they sparkle. I put, it, I put it in this perspective. I was making a joke about this the other night. Um, it's almost like getting ready for a cocktail party that you're not invited to. You're sort of the cater waiter to this cocktail party. Hmm. So get your house ready, everything lit, ready to go, smelling right, and then you've got to leave for your showing. <laughs> <laughs> right? Bring in professional carpet cleaners. Have the carpets clean. Right? You know, it's amazing how cheap carpet cleaning is. Not that bad. Now, rugs are a different story. Right. Sherry and rugs indicator. I think they're one of the best. Drop it off. They're on East Ponce. They're just on the edge of downtown. Um, right. So again, pre-planning. We can walk through your home and give you these pointers too, just FYI, because it'll take about a month to get these carpets cleaned. Yeah. So you want to let you polish things, make sure the wood looks good. Um, change light bulb. If the light bulbs are out, replace them. And can we talk about the, the, the color themes of lights? Like when you walk into a house and you feel like you're in a fluorescent showroom oh, versus man. a warmer light. Um, the LEDs are, I think, catching up with our needs and, and making sure that all of the lights in the house are within the same color tone. And you would want to make it a, a lighter one. Yeah. A warmer one. A rather. warm. A warmer one. Yeah. You don't want it to look like it's a school library. You right. Know, fluorescent. My, my friends say that we're blonde, like I'm blue, like the underbelly of a catfish. So anything that gives me some skin tone, <laughs> some color, <laughs> I, I appreciate that. <laughs> all right. How about inside, like neutralizing the house? Like, you know, painting the walls uh, more of a neutral color, still important, right? Right. So, yes, just a quick rule of thumb here, too. When you're thinking of painting your room, well, first of all, just do it. If there's ever a question and the magic eraser doesn't fix it, 
On average, it costs about $400 per room. This is not including your trim and your ceiling because typically walls will cover this. Um, now, this is not your expansive rooms or you know something, but your average sized room, I guess that would probably fall within about 12 to 15, um, you know, 12 by 15. So right. just quick rule. Right. Okay, paint your rooms. Personal hey. taste. Hey, throw it out, forget about it, you know? Go with what's, you know, the, the, you think the buyer's gonna, gonna look Appeal forward. to those buyers. The broadest market will help you bring the broader, or the broader taste will help you appeal to the broader market. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, space management? Space management. Okay, let's talk about it. Let's declutter. Now, my, I love pods. How do you feel about pods? I like pods. Pods, yeah. the shipping pods. They're yeah, the best. Absolutely. They pull them up. You can fill them up with however you want to. We've got movers and stagers to help you maybe even organize that. Yeah. But fill those suckers up and get them out of here. What rule of thumb do you, what percentage do you say to think, uh, for telling people of how much to move out? Hmm. Probably 30%. Yeah. That's the number I used to. Not too bad, right? Yeah. Re remove 30%. All right. Okay. Unless you're a hoarder. Right. So let's talk about collectibles. <laughs> what, when you grew up, let's put your mom on the spot. Uh, what was your mom's most favorite collectible? Oh, man. What's your favorite collectible? I don't Now or then? I don't know. It was... well, you're an old lady. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. The, but my mom did lots of arts and craft stuff. So like, she's a crafty mom? She did. She yeah, could we like do woodwork too. stuff and then she'd paint it and it'd be, oh. you know, something ugly, but it would say, oh, you know. mom, I know he doesn't mean that. <laughs> my mom, my mom's collectibles really came out at Christmas because she collected all of her friends crafty stuff, uh. which I liked it. But, you know, 30 years later, the crafty stuff continues to come out and they're starting to fall apart. So I've got to be I've got to be the one to tell her that maybe this shouldn't come out this year. So she brings it out at Christmas. So uh -huh. just make sure oh, yeah, that they realize. Oh, yeah, this is all year round. No. Uh. But, <laughs> okay. So, um, yes, we were talking about this a couple months ago, Granny Chic. People are taking their collectibles, and they've, they're starting to hoard their grandparents' stuff, and now it's become a new design term called Granny Chic. <laughs> I love the term. I'm not a Granny Chic person. Right. No, so that's not for me either. Okay. Uh, so pack away, how about clothing? Clothing, you know, in your closets, you got a bunch of uh, off-season clothes, get yes. those out too, you know? Remove clothing. Make it look, make the closet look good. And now this is number 14. I'm gonna try to start counting so that you can keep up. Where this is, nine, again, 90 ways to keep your, to, again, this is 90 ways to help your home sell faster and for more money. And we're on number 14, <laughs> organize your clothes. I mean, that's an easy one, just to get an organizer in there, just to re, or, you can call my husband. He loves to just criticize the way I fold my clothes <laughs> <laughs> or don't. I, it's the piles getting so big. I sort of like ball it up and just sort of toss it. Oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's me. That looks good. Uh huh. <laughs> you should see the size of my closet. <laughs> All right. So uh, lighting, you know, lighting is extremely important, right? Yes. Uh... We, I, I, I learn from clients every day on this one. Those those battery powered LED lights in a closet or a laundry room and sticking them above the door so that when a, your house is being shown, first of all, when your home's being shown, isn't it great to walk in when all the lights are on? Right. It's all show lights. ready. Right. So have your house show ready. But the other one is if you mount one of those lights above the door and turn that thing on when you leave, it, it makes the closet seem bigger. Right. Yeah. But back to the clothes. How do you tell them to pare their clothes down? Oh. <laughs> I think you would be great person to <laughs> tell people what to do about in well, the closets. <laughs> I I think I think my rule of thumb is is keep this show, the south is tough cuz we seem to go back and forth between seasons. But I think pull out the season of clothes that you're not in. Right. That's an easy one, right? Sure. Okay. Right. It helps keep it cleaner and, yeah. and, and less Agreed. clutter and not so packed. And stick it in your pod. All right. There you go. Okay. Number uh, 15, create a sense of light and space, open up your drapes. So mm -hmm. when we tell you to open up, turn on those lights, open up those drapes. And again, you said this earlier, I think you jumped ahead, <laughs> replace those burnout light bulbs. I mean, this was, not, this was information from the 90s. I think this is still legitimate today. But you go into all the time and there's light bulbs out yeah. throughout a house. Yeah, right? absolutely. My husband right now, we have one light in his office that's working out of four. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know what? I'll be over tomorrow. I'll change. Please, for you. please bring some Absolutely. light bulbs. I'll bring a ladder too. And you know what color it was? It's that really white, bl bright blue one. I hate it. <laughs> Let's move on to atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> How about change the batteries in your uh, in your smoke detector? What drives me crazy oh, going into a house yeah. and you're hearing the beep like every you know. By the way, this is not minutes. an atmosphere, but that does kill the atmosphere. That kills the atmosphere right you away. You know, it's like yeah, it's, it's it's a reminder that your alarm could go off at any any minute. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, but number sixteen, atmosphere. Um, a clean smelling home helps create a positive image in the buyer's mind. Be aware of any odors, cooking, cigarettes, pets, etc. cetera. Um, I mean, gosh, this is a whole, this is a whole podcast in itself. Yeah. I, I'm constantly surprised how people live. Wow. Yeah. You know, it's shocking. And shocking. they'll have a dozen dogs in the house, you know? Okay. And they all stink. They all, they, yes, bathe your dogs, bathe your dogs, <laughs> bathe, bathe your dogs. Rip up the carpet. At least once a week. <laughs> I mean, to the point, I think my dog was having skin issues because we were bathing her so much. much. <laughs> <laughs> you know, again, it's almost as if you are throwing a cocktail party right before the ascension. You're not going to be there to enjoy it, but this is how you set up your house. Right. Okay. Um, oh, pets. This is one. Etched glass on the back door. You know, the ones that they jump up against and those claws scrape, scrape them? It. Just go ahead and replace the door. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's all I got to say about that one. Okay. Uh, number 17, deodorizers, air fresheners, please, uh, remove the source of the smell rather than cover it up. I mean, yes. So let's talk about, let's talk about pet and specifically cat odor. I mean, I, my eyes immediately start watering and my throat closes up, right? I, I'm the best. You know, if you need somebody the to, to let you know, cat if urine. yeah, if there's cat urine or dog problems, you, I'll send me to the house. I, okay, I, I think this I'm is an inspector. Cat, cats are sort of a three-step process. You rip out anything upholstery, you kills it. If you're not familiar with kills, it's a it's a paint, it's a primer, it's a really strong primer that really just encapsulates everything, and then you paint and cover everything back up with your carpet, your rug, or whatever. Um, so again, there's your three-part collection. Oh. Um, Client, I mean, uh, um, um, quick tip. Have you heard of the hotel collection? Go to three six, no, go to aroma360.com. And this company sells all the smells from all the different hotels around the world. Oh, love it. Fine. Okay. Next one. Number 18. I mean, this is sort of redundant from 17 about how to get rid of cat urine. Uh, let's move on. 19. <laughs> if smoking and cooking odors permeate, permeate your home, have the carpets, furniture, and your drapes cleaned. I mean, yes. Well, uh, yeah. This is a little redundant as well. Obviously, yes. Everything that, everything fabric, get it cleaned or get rid of it. Um, okay, 21. Okay. Staging? Staging. Oh, wait, did we get 21? No. This is... Sorry. I don't, okay, this is what I'm pushing, I'm pushing 21 here because this is totally of its era. Um, cinnamon, fresh flour, baking bread in the oven, making cookies. I mean, it sort of reminds me of Annette Bening in American Beauty rushing around in her, I think it was a camisole, because she took off her blouse to get ready for that open house. Have you seen the infamous state theme in that movie? If we can get the rights, I'm gonna show a picture, I'm gonna show the, the, the little snippet right in this section of this podcast here. Okay, let's go on to staging. <laughs> professional staging, that's what we, you know, suggest, right? It, I mean, you're just... dealing with two professional stagers here. We're very opinionated. <laughs> right? But we'll hire outdoor help, too. I mean, outside help, too. <laughs> very important, right? You want to make the house and the rooms look as attractive as possible. Attractive right? as possible. A little possible. bit of color, flowers, you know, maybe a throw pillow, too. But, again, you'll... Get a professional stager, you, you'll, you'll be covered with us. It's amazing how a stager can, and it's happened to me a couple of times, and my parents, where you get the home stager in, they declutter, they change up a couple colors, mm -hmm. they organize the furniture, or change the use of the rooms, and all of a sudden the owner's like, why are we moving? This home works just fine for us. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm glad they're happy, but I just walked myself out of a deal. <laughs> 
Um, how about nondescript photos throughout the house, right? Like family photos and personal photos? You know, I've got to hide those, so the ones that are personal, maybe the wedding photos and all that stuff. Get that out. Oh. Kind of make it a little bit more. That wedding neutral. photo wall or the one that says eat, love, cook, I like to whine. I mean, <laughs> you name it, right? Let's let's stay out of the home goods section there. For, or if you do, I love this. I love them. But this is maybe we'll pull them down when it comes time to sell. That and political signs. <laughs> We won't go there because we want people to see your house, not what's going on in your head right. and <laughs> or what your family's think, which is great. I mean, we love family photos. It's just I also you want to be able to not remind them that someone lives in this home. You want to tell you want to help them imagine themselves in this home. Yep. So, um, yes. And number 23 here, just hearkening back to our 1994 log of of how to get your home ready for the market. Um, brightly colored pillows, a wing, um, in a, in a wing back chair and a throw blanket on a sofa can add attention or uh, a dimension to a sterile room. Yeah. Okay. So with this, I thought I would add some fun colors that I've heard of lately. Have you looked at some of the dumb colors out on the market? I have another set. Okay. I have a couple really funny ones for you. Um, elephant's breath. Can you imagine what color that is? It's wow. gray. It's gray. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's a light gray. Nice. Uh, s simmer down. What color is that? Brown. It's, it's sort of like a, it's a, it's a, it's a grayish. It's like a brown. It's like a warm, it's a warm gray. Okay. Oh, mole's breath. Yeah, mole's breath. Dark green. It's sort of like elephant's breath. I think they were just running out of creativity that day. Yeah, they clearly, they run out of creativity. Oh, this was a good one. Search party. <laughs> it's. In the same family as, um, as Simmer Down, it's sort of a warmer gray. But um, anyway, check those colors out. I think you might like one or two of them for your own home. Gross. Okay, moving on to 24. <laughs> uh, soften potentially offensive views. Um, always let light into the room. And sheer white panels. I think that's still appropriate for, for today's, for yeah. current day. Um, just present your home in the best way possible with complete honesty. Let's talk about honesty when preparing a home because we can easily cover stuff up, right? but they're going to discover it. Right. That's, that's our, that's our mantra here is, I mean, this is, I sort of lead my life to ask for forgiveness rather than permission, except for this. <laughs> okay. Next okay. exterior. Let's talk about the exterior of the house, okay? Perfect. Number 27. Right. Nice fresh po uh, coat of paint would be uh, really appropriate. <laughs> this, one's, this one's time funny. Did you read the plants they suggest? Yes, yes. Yes. Geraniums, a pot of geraniums, a pot of petunias, or a basket of impatience. This is screaming 1993 right here in our list of, 100, of 90 ways to help sell your house faster and for more money. Um, right. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, that so they still work, you know? They're, st they're, they're still, still in the market. They're still there. Um, I like ferns, cast iron plant, and uh, boxwoods, fatsia. These are plants that are hard to kill um, if you water them rem like a week. I think the plants that they mentioned here, just leading back in my horticulture days, cast iron plant, they call it cast iron plant for a reason. It's impossible to kill. Hmm. So again, add some color and greenery in your home, outside your home. This one's on the exterior, yes. Okay. So uh, you should stage your porch and, and your back patio. Yes, number 28, staging your patio. Right. I think this is the easiest. This is one of the best investments because you can take all this stuff with you. Yeah. I mean, your pots, your containers. We can help you figure out these plants that are not going to die. <laughs> and then you can take these, uh, these planters with you when you move. That's my favorite thing. Right. You know, a good power washing is, is always great for yeah. a house, you know? Did I tell you what my anniversary present was for my parents this year? A power washer. A power washer. That's a great gift. Mike and I just used it last week. That's a, that's a gift that keeps on giving. Oh, yeah. yeah. Apparently, Mom was telling us my house is dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Paint the front door, you know? Yes. Get it, at least get that right. First impressions. <laughs> First impressions are key. I think along with the front door, you want to make sure that latch works and that key works. I mean, I, I also tell people, just replace the whole knob and door situation. You want it to be bright working function functioning and make sure that door opens make sure that weather stripping is not going to keep that sucker from right. opening up easily right 
Yep. But you you need to wash your windows inside and out. Yes. I remove screens on the front of the house. I, it, the sh house shows so much better if the screen's not there. It just it makes the whole it makes the window pop. I agree. Yeah. It also, at least from the front, I love a screen. I mean, who hasn't had their closet eaten with some moths before? Um, but you know, we need those screens, but not when you're selling your house. The other trick to selling your house is you're, you're, li you're living a lie. This is the part you can lie about. You're living a lie that you live like this all the time and you're really not right. Um, shingles. Is there any loose shingles that should be yeah. addressed? Right. Home maintenance guys. Come on. Uh, we like to talk to our clients at least once a year, if not quarterly. <laughs> and so we're happy to just come and catch you up on these things. So when it does come time to move, you don't have this laundry list of, well, we're on number 30 right now. So hopefully you won't have that many on yours. And a nice welcome mat, you know, out front. I, you know, I, I recently saw a, a, a welcome mat that, well, it was unwelcome mat. It said, uh, did you call or text first? <laughs> you know, we should have one to say, it says, did you make an appointment? <laughs> <laughs> call you, call my agent. That that should be it. Call my agent. Yeah, that's a good one. All right, let's move that's, on. Okay, that's our next million dollar idea. We're gonna do doormats. <laughs> Find them at the next Home Depot. <laughs> All right, how about the yard? Yard. Yes, this is this is my wheelhouse here. Okay, talk to me. Yeah, you need to mow it, right? Oh. Be mowed, mowed every week at least. Yeah. And I mean, once you start on the market, it all depends upon the season too, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so understanding. Because it's not like you could just make your yard look great unless you're willing to really spend thousands of dollars to do it. Like the rugs that you're gonna send to Sharon to get those um, cleaned, you need to talk to us probably, I would hope six months in advance. So pruning happens in the winter, grass planting happens in the fall, and of course your spring bulbs and things would happen in the fall as well. So depending on what time of, time of year you're planting, planning to plant or sell would determine when we need to start working on the yard to make it look the best. And how about add some pine straw? Okay, well, I you love have a, this You have one. a strong opinion about pine straw. I have straw, a strong opinion about pine straw. Pine straw is the Botox and filler for your yard. <laughs> you can hide a lot of things with pine straw. I mean, if you, if you didn't have any ground cover, if something's eroding wrong, if there's a dead plant, just put a bunch of pine straw there. Um, if there's a dead part in your yard, just make a new bed. Um, if, if the dog was running loops around the yard, put pine straw on it. It's great. <laughs> And it's cheap. And, it and you can do it yourself. It hides the snakes, too. <laughs> yes. You have snakes? You have snakes. It will cover them up yep. real Dog good. poop covers up dog poop. Ugh. Yep. Because the great thing about new pine straw is the dog poop just sort of falls down inside of it. Wow. Yep. Thanks for that. You're welcome. All right. Next up is the driveway. We want to get the driveway yes. looking good. This is number 40 in your list of 90 ways to make your house sell faster <laughs> and, for more, and for more money. Number 40. Pressure wash the driveway. Hey. I mean... I like the chalk marks of kids that are playing hot scotch or drawing yeah. in the yard, but unless your kid is a, is a true artist, I would say probably not the time to do it. I love children, by yeah. the way. Right. <laughs> Just pick up on the sarcasm. I'm kidding. We can edit that out. <laughs> okay, um, number 41. The surface of your driveway should be beyond reproach, after all. It's one of the first things the buyer sees when they approach the driveway. I think it's the driveway, the front door, and the smell of your house. Those are probably the three first things, right? Okay, moving on. Uh, sweep, wash, and, and wash your driveway, and remove any weeds, and of course, children's toys. Yep. I mean, again, this list is from 1993-ish. I think this still reigns true for it today. Works. Yeah. Right. Um, yes. Okay. okay. And when you walk in the front door, you know, mm -hmm. you, you, that, that needs to be a, a strong impression too, right? I agree. Back to our three, Aroma 360, our <laughs> hotel collection. I'd love to hear what your favorites for collections are. I mean, maybe the St. Regis in Maui. That's, I would imagine that one would smell really good. I would imagine so. Okay. Next. Um, number 42. Yeah, Do you want to move inside? Go ahead. Okay. Room by room analysis. Let's move inside the front entry, number 42. That's right. You were just talking about that. Yeah. Front entry. Okay. Number 43. Gosh, that really... Okay. It's it says here, by virtually, virtually any entry hall will benefit from a well-placed mirror and, and will enlarge the area. Um, yes, it will. it will. Just don't have this mirror facing you right when you walk in the door. Bad feng shui. True. Yeah. 
We'll just leave it there. Bad feng shui. So um, I think this still reigns true with today's, I, today's I market. Right. 90 ways to sell your house faster and for more money. We're on number 45, the entry hall. Yeah. I mean, where do we start here? I think that um, <laughs> we're also talking, from, we're also evaluating a list from 1993. This, this is from my parents' business in North Carolina. And if these points still reign true today, and this one here is starting out by saying, put cedar chips in the foyer. And a, um, what's a pomander ball? A pomander ball? That must be, that must be 90s. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. With a pleasant uh, uh, scent and remove any off-season clothing. Hold on a second. Why is off-season clothing in your entry hall? <laughs> Maybe you gotta... Oh, add a few extra hangers. Oh, they must be talking about the closet. Okay, yes, I think this still reigns true. Remove all those winter jackets if it's spring. No one needs to see the ski jackets and all those, those lift tags on there, right? Let's Very get those nice. out of there. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, I'll add something too to that. How about wooden hangers? Like a, like a nice collection of wooden hangers sure. to make that look good. Right. Okay. No wire. Yeah. No wire hangers. <laughs> okay, number 46. Let's move on to the living areas. Great. Sweep and clean the fireplace. Place logs in, to give, uh, in the fireplace to give an attractive appearance. And so it gives the uh, impression of a warm, fiery glow in winter months. Creates atmosphere. Right. And I put, I sort of put, in addition to this, I like to put like a big fern if it's summertime. Just to sort of fill that up. All right. Okay. okay. Any thoughts on that? No, just keep the, get the ashes out of the fireplace yeah, for sure. The ashes that's, a, that's a bad smell for I mean, the house anyway. The smell smells good in the winter time, but not in the spring. Right. Yeah. Okay. 47. Go ahead. Uh, place something colorful on the mantle, <laughs> but don't make it look too crafty or country. Hello, I like that. Hello, mother. <laughs> <laughs> so was there anything really tacky when you were growing up that always made its way to the, to the family mantle? There were plenty of things tacky, I think, you know? We had, we had all of my school pictures, like, in a row. Uh, that may have sat off to the side. I just remember looking at those things. I'd, so you could see the variation of the different haircuts, my mullet, and I, I don't think my rat tail ever got in there. I had a rat tail for a couple months. <laughs> Did you, was your mother into cat tails ever once? Speaking of tails. <laughs> Mom hated cats. Yeah. Well, no. it's not. No, it's, it's, it's a plant, you know. Oh, big... cattails? <laughs> oh, cattails. No. My mom grew up on a farm, yeah. but she didn't. I don't. She thinks of it fondly, but she was not a farm girl. Okay, 90 ways to sell your house faster and for, mom, and for more money. And we are looking back at some notes that I have from 1993 from my parents' business. And we're on number 48. Yes. Okay, traffic. Look, hey, you know, if, if you can't afford the stager, if someone's not helping you with that, at least help the flow when you walk into a room, right? With, with, again, remove excess furniture and... Uh, Make it, a, you know, make it where you can walk through and you don't trip over something. I agree. We're really opinionated on this one. We can walk into a room and rip it to shreds. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, we can walk into your room and really help you with this. I really, I enjoy that part of the job too. I mean, I enjoy most aspects of it, mm. but uh, yeah, you know, that's one of my favorites. Yeah. Just helping massage, make you're, them you're good at showcasing. That. Absolutely. You're really good at that. Okay. Number 49, draw attention to exposed beams, cathedral ceilings, and special lighting. Be sure to remo remove cobwebs and dust. Man, come on. I mean, that is sort of funny though, that, but again, that's an obvious one. I think that still reigns true for today's I just market. just sold a house uh, a couple months ago and I walked in and the entire ceiling is covered really? with, with uh, spider webs. Like you, there had to be hundreds in the you, house. You sort of wonder, because if you're hanging out watching TV, like at what point is one not going to just drop down on top of you? Ever? Do yeah. they never look up? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, let's move on to number 50. Remove oversized <laughs> television sets. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely period. This is period. 1993. This is 1993. <laughs> um, if they dominate the room, especially so, or um, substitute a smaller one until you move. What, you could take your 75 inch flat I mean, screen down? Right. No. It was, yeah. Well, I think nowadays too, I love the picture, the, the portrait ones that hang flush. Oh, and funny. you can even have the framing on the, around the outside. I mean, that's funny, but I still think it reigns true. Right. Yeah. It is funny. I walked into a house once. I counted 15 televisions in this home. There were two in the master bedroom, one 
in the, in the uh, I shouldn't say master bed, in the owner's suite, as well as one in the bathroom. Wow. And I did start to wonder about the relationship of this, the, this couple. But um, How about anyway, the cable that was bill? Funny. The cable bill. Oh, that's right, because you're paying per box, yeah, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Let's move on to the dining room. 90 ways to sell your house for faster and more money. Number 51 in the dining room. How about some uh, a f a nice flower you know, arrangement or fresh flowers? or Yeah, just set plant. the table up for like going back to this dinner party that you can't attend, uh, minus the food. Um, get it ready for a party in a way. Sure. My trick is Trader Joe's. Um, $14 for orchids. That, you stop by Pike with some of that sheet moss, stick it in a container of some sort. I mean, obviously you've even seen them in like cast iron skillets mm. with enough moss around it and some orchids. I mean, it's a great little sure. piece. But, you know, John and I, I, I love to go to Pike and do that kind of thing. So. Absolutely. Okay, 52. Visually enlarge a small um, dining space by removing some of the leaves of the table. So just because your table can fit 14 doesn't necessarily mean your room can, and it makes your room feel bigger. That one, I think that range true for sure. today. Yeah, pull some chairs out. Yeah, pull some chairs out. Yep. Okay. So the next one, number 53. Let's talk about the kitchen. Sure. Again, clutter. Let's remove some clutter. Cl I mean, clean off the Small counter appliances. Tops. Do not like all the appliances out. And, you know, you're... Um... I agree. My thought is if you don't use that small appliance every day, Get rid of it. Right. Pack it up. Move it in that pod Should that's big, the, that's out there the in the camera. driveway. <laughs> <laughs> Number 54. Check the countertop um, for and the sinks for any detergent, cleansers. Move them off because those seem a little bit cluttered too. Mm -hmm. um, I'll give you a little part of my OCD personality as to I like to dry out the stainless steel sink so it doesn't leave watermarks. Sure. That's a great idea. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. You're full of it. Yeah, full uh, of it. <laughs> you want to take 55? <laughs> so, yeah, but again, we're just talking about sinks, cabinets, and countertops. You know, organize, get them cleaned off. Fresh. Make sure they're clean. And when people do open up your cabinets, they're going to look through. It's just part of it. So they shouldn't be a disaster. I agree. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've probably all made up for our, for our uh, s limited social interactions through COVID by buying stuff online. So this is a great time to evaluate your spending habits and, and maybe stop in at the, at the uh, container store, pick up some things to dump this stuff in and maybe move it to the garage or the basement. Okay. Number 56. Clean up that refrigerator or any other pop appliances that are out, right? Make them Polish shine. that refrigerator. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the part that gets me too is that little mildewy edge around the refrigerator or the door. Oh yeah. Hit that up. Oh, oh, and the one around the the wash the dishwasher that can get sort of disgusting too. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And, and your um, inside the refrigerator too should be cleaned up, right? Yeah, my mom. Most are in glass shelves now. They should be clean. Yes, the glass shelves should be clean. My mother has this thing when uh, she she would I don't think she ever told her friends this, but the way she could tell if a kitchen was really clean, my mom's gonna get upset with me for this. Uh -oh. She would you could look underneath the um, the 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 the, the um, faucet in the kitchen. And you can see how clean they are. That's, Ooh, that was her measure of how clean the kitchen right. was. Speaking of which, 57 is clean the top of the refrigerator. Yes, that's a good one. It's lots of dust up there. Yeah, actually, I, yes, that's a bad one. Um, <laughs> and remove magnets from the refrigerator. And it's ironic now that these stainless steel refrigerators makes our job easier. The stainless steel refrigerators don't take to magnets. So that's an easy one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next up, set the sink in the kitchen, right? Maybe an open cookbook. If you can cook, I, I, I can't. Do you own any cookbooks? No, I don't own one. Do you know, do you cook, John? No. <laughs> what was the last meal you made? I, I wouldn't remember it. Seriously? Years, yeah, years ago. Like, do you not do breakfast or, or sandwiches or anything? No, I eat out every meal. Really? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. That's cool. So what is your favorite meal if you were to breakfast. be able to make a meal? Always breakfast. Right. What, was your, what was your ideal breakfast? Oh, you know, eggs, bacon, biscuits, if possible. You can make a biscuit? I cannot. No, oh, this comes out of a can. Sure. Oh, okay. Cool. Does your mother know you can't cook? She knows I can cook. She knows I don't like to cook. Okay, well, the question is, can you? what can you cook? Not much. Oh, come on. Okay, we're moving on. It's a lot of, a lot of effort. You it know? is a lot of effort. And if you're by yourself, it's just not worth it. It's yeah. not worth the time. Okay. I mean, if you're cooking for someone else, maybe. Yeah. But. Okay. What are we on now? Now, number 59. 90 ways to sell your house faster and for more money. We're on 
Item 59. Um, create the aroma of happy with a happy home. Uh, bake cookies from a, from pre from premix. They yeah, this is from a list from the 90s, by the way. Uh, refrigerated cookie dough. Start baking a loaf of this refrigerated cookie dough or refrigerated bread dough. Oh, pop a frozen apple pie in the oven. <laughs> 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 Boy, people are going to hate us when they're gaining all this weight when their homes are on the market. Have you ever taken an apple pie to an open house and popped it in before they got there? I mean, it's not a bad idea. I think cookies are easier. Yeah, cookies, but then you need like, but then you need like a cookie sheet and cut them. Well, then they've got the ones that you can break now that are already like, I guess, perforated. Okay. We digress. Number 60. In the hot heat of summer, place a bowl of lemons or limes on the counter. Oh, to make a, I thought in the heat of summer, that has nothing to do with the lemons or limes, but yes, place them on the island. I guess that's supposed to bring across the sense of summer. Right. Okay. All right, 61, clean up and organize the, uh, the storage space. So your pantry, gotta yes. be, gotta, gotta, gotta look good, right? You know, I think this rains, this is also in line with that idea we had with the LED lights in closets or laundry rooms. If you put that LED light above the door, it just adds a little bit more light to that room. Okay. I think it really shows it off well. The other OCD thing we like to do is turn all the labels facing one direction in the pantry. Oh, yeah. And even in your, 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 your storage, wherever that is, it, for some reason that, that um, makes it feel, that I guess, more organized. Better, right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Number, what's next? Next up, it says a large, uh, cheerful kitchen windows. Take advantage, you know. Take, should be highlights of the special feature of your home. Clean those drapes. I mean, that's the first thing to get like tomato splatter and bacon <clears throat> grease. Okay. Oh my God, get up, yeah, clean out the grease, right? Okay, that was a dud one. I don't like that one. <laughs> then I move to the laundry room? Let's go. Okay, 90 ways to sell your house faster and more money. We're talking about the laundry room next, number 65. Yep, add a fresh, coat of paint. Fresh coat of paint. It's, I mean, it's one of the cheapest things you can do. Sure. I think we talked about this earlier. Mm -hmm. On average, the amount, the amount of money that it costs to paint an average sized room is about $400. $400 well spent right. or a Saturday afternoon. <laughs> you do it of course, you want to organize and you know make the space look tidy. Exactly. A lot of people forget. I mean, the, the laundry room is kind of, a, it's a lot of people, unimportant. To me, it's probably one of my favorite rooms in the house. I agree. I love the laundry. I had a client. I can't he, cook, but he I love He staged it. it. He had, he put <laughs> like, he put his favorite swim trunks hanging in there. And he even had this like vintage one piece men's sort of romper thing. And he then had like a, a beach ball. It was really cute. I mean, it, that laundry room got the most comments of all the showings we had when that home was on the market. So, you know, and it was just a closet. It was a laundry closet. Anyway. Next up, remove dirty laundry. Come on. That's, that's <laughs> I know. not to be, I have Re to say this. Remove dirty laundry, keeping the laundry, um, the smell in a closed container. And in parentheses here, it says maybe even hermetically sealed or welded shut. Welded shut. <laughs> I wrote beside this, I think we should invent a diaper genie for adults. You know what a diaper genie is? You put the diapers in there, Why? it keeps the smell from permeating the house. Okay. So we need the diaper genie for adults. For smelly clothes? We're, yeah. Ugh. Yeah. yeah. I mean. Just wash. Okay. Again, again, this list being from 1993, right. I think it still reigns true for today. Oh. Next. Polish or, uh, it says polish the washer and dryer. I agree. Stainless steel. It gets dusty. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mildew around that edge, that, that little seal, get that mildew out of there. Right. It doesn't help. It wouldn't hurt to also put like that baking soda little piece. And never mind. Moving on. All right. 90 ways to sell your house faster and for more money. We are reading from a list my parents had from their business from the early 90s, and we're having some fun with this. We're on number 70. Get those stairways organized and ready for company. <laughs> they should be clean and safe, right? I mean, it says here to keep it clean and safe. Right. Uh, stair lighting is, uh, make sure it's adequate, right. as well as check conditions of walls, paint, and re-wallpaper if necessary. I mean, this is so out of date, it's in date now yep. with all the wallpaper going up. <laughs> um, stair rails should be, you know, firm. They shouldn't be wobbly, you know, things that, you know. Right, sturdy up that hand railing. We actually were walking, we were walking up, of a, up the staircase just last week, and this enormous piece of stone just flipped right off of it. 
I mean, they didn't have this list of 90 things to get their house ready. <laughs> they would okay. have not made that mistake. Number 71. If the stairs are the focal point of the living space, make sure that it has visual appeal. If you have wide, gracious staircase, emphasize this. Emphasize this by hanging a few photos on the stairwell. Um, may, maybe even a, a chandelier. And it says here, too, polish that brass. Time check. I mean, to era check here. Dusting each small light bulb and crystal prism. So true. Do you notice those dusty light bulbs? Do, do you yes. Miss? Okay, yep. I noticed that too. I, th I thought I might be the only one. No, no. Okay, Maybe dust your light bulbs, people. <laughs> do it with the light bulb off. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking from experience. Okay. Moving on to bedrooms. Okay. Okay. 90 ways to sell your house faster and for more money. And we're talking about bedrooms. Number 72. This one says, imagine your home as a bed and breakfast. All right? Yeah. A nice hotel room. Yes. I mean, I agree with that. Yeah. That's range true today. Sure. Paint it a light color. Yep. Remove bureaus that might make the room feel crowded. Yeah. Minimize clutter. Aim for a restful, scheduled, oh, <laughs> subdued look. <laughs> scheduled look. I guess everything's still So scheduled. red would not be a good color for a bedroom. No. No. However, <laughs> I, I mean, so I love Kohl's for these kind of things. I mean, Home Goods and those other stores are pretty good too, but yeah. I love Kohl's for two reasons. They have the Kohl's card, which you get a discount on. Plus, if you have a Kohl's card, they continue to send you dates throughout the year. So hold on to those coupons. They're really good for your towels, your blankets, your bedding. Um, can I go on? Yeah. My other thing I love about Kohl's, Vera Wang's linen line is really good. It holds up really well. And, and she has a really good collection of, of it's just a nice, simple, uh, contemporary collection of linens. Wow. Nice. Pro, trip, pro tip for you. Nice plug for Kohl's. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number 73. Um, the, pipe, the private bathroom. I can't say that. The private bathroom of the master bedroom is a real sales plus. I mean, of course, yes. I mean, that's, I think the two main rooms in the home people go for first. One's the kitchen and the second is the primary suite bathroom. Yeah. And again, you want to make this feel sort of spa-like. I mean, yes, number 73, that is still reigns true for today. And then moving on to 74, it's moving into the closet. Yeah, the closet space. Again, just like we said earlier, get it clean. Get it clean. Uh, make, make it look larger. You know, if it's not cluttered, it will look larger. Pull those non-seasoned clothes out. I also love that LED light that you can pop to the inside just above the door and leave that on as you leave, along with all the other lights in your house. That, with removing, what, probably 30 to 50% of the clothes in the room, will and restack, fold. Oh, and a lot of bedrooms smell. I mean, about a lot of, uh, <laughs> of the closet smell. So it's very important to get that odor. odor out. I mean, some neutralizers are good. Mm -hmm. Charcoal. Oh, Just charcoal. little charcoal yeah. bags. You can buy those on uh, oh, Amazon and yeah. you throw them in the corner, and they'll, they'll help neutralize the That's smell. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you could get them cheaper if you use those organic charcoal ones versus the ones that are made for the rooms. Hmm. Anyway, just a little money-saving tip. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, yeah, this is 76. We sort of touched on this one a little bit, which is lighting. Lighting. Yeah, Lighting's key. Makes it feel bigger and better. Right. I mean, IKEA also has a really inexpensive series of LED lights that tack up onto the bottom of shelves, right. which really gives it a nice glow too. And you can manage the, you know, the light level there. This also mentions is the importance of marketing to your, I mean, sh ex explaining marketing of the house to your children. Yes. Like you can get them involved. You've done cool things with kids get to the, like. Get the kids involved. When I, when I work with families with children, we have this club, it's called the, kid, the Clean Kids Club. And if we have some unruly kids, I will just bribe them flat out with tickets to maybe like Six Flags or, or maybe even the Fern Bank, something maybe the Fern Bank with more educational. Six Flags is probably more fun. Sure. So the, King, the Clean Kids Club, so they can um, have something to look forward to at the end. That's, that's something yeah. fun. Yeah. Bribery. That's right. And you get them involved, you know, and make it right. True. And when you get the kids involved too, they understand it might be time to help clean up. And for number 78, donate some of these toys. Yep. Right. Find a donation, a don I think find an organization that your kids would also love to support and also get them involved with this process. Mm -hmm.